What is going on everybody? I'm Dr. Fest Luigi and today I'm going to show you how to set up your tracks for immersive railroading. This is part one of my immersive railroading tutorial. And this covers all about tracks because in order to drive a train you need tracks to drive it on. Uh, so for those of you who don't know, immersive railroading is a really cool mod that adds immersive railroading. Railroading. That's immersive. Uh, and so what makes it really cool is that it's actual full-scale trains rather than the little trains that we're used to from older mods like train craft or um, just the mine carts or rail craft. Uh, and so yeah, these are full-size trains. You could walk around inside of them. It's really cool. Uh, and the, and the, most of the packs are really super detailed. I do have my own pack. Better believe it. Unu pack, best pack ever. Uh, not not as detailed as the original pack, but 99% more communism. Anyway, uh, I'll I'll kind of go a little more in depth with my pack later. Do that plug, but let's just go ahead and jump right in to what you're all been waiting for of a track tutorial. I think it is suiting, fitting that my uh, next my previous big tutorial was railcraft and now we're doing immersive railroading I guess I like trains it's funny because I started out hating this mod so let's just go ahead and jump right into it so uh, if you're gonna build these things in survival I'm not gonna go over any of the crafting recipes uh, you can, JEI is a thing but I will cover anything that's kind of weird that you that is kinda of hard to look up so if I go ahead and go into survival, uh, you'll notice I grabbed some rail segments and some treated wood planks. This mod does sort of kind of maybe a little bit requires immersive engineering. I'm not, I, apparently they made it so you don't have to have immersive engineering anymore. Just install immersive engineering. Great mod, gets you that steel you need to build your own trains, uh, otherwise you're going to be mining for a while. So if you're using immersive engineering, which you should, uh, you're going to need treated wood planks for the railroad ties and rail segments for the rails. Uh, I'll show you how to make a rail segment in the next video that talks about machines. For now, we're just going to assume you have some rail segments and you have some treated wood planks. And then it's as simple as just placing down the tracks and they will automatically be taken out of your inventory and turned into the track. When you break the track, you'll get those pieces right back. And that's really all there is about survival. There's a few other things, but I'll mention that when we get there. So if, as you already saw, you can place down a track, you can break a track, pretty fun stuff. Um, the first thing that's noticeable is if you compare it to the vanilla track. Vanilla track, you place a block at a time, you do 90 degree turns. If you want to do 45, you had to do something a little fancy like that. Um, and that's all fun and good, but when you have big tracks like this, that's kind of impossible to do especially if you want these really cool sweeping turns that they've got. So you place tracks kind of a chunk at a time, not a Minecraft chunk, just like a, a chunk chunk, like the regular word. Um, and so when you right click it and you're not looking at a block, you'll get this GUI. And this is where you define the track type, which I'll go over in detail. Uh, the length of the track, rail bed, rail bed fill, position, direction, gauge, whether it's a blueprint and whether it's a grade crossing. And so I'll, I'll go through all of those, of course, if I set the time today. There we go. All right, so first let's go over the track types. First type is straight. It's pretty hardcore stuff. It's a straight track. See if you can keep up with me on this next one. We got a crossing, which is where a train track crosses. Now, in the newest version of tra uh, in train, I keep wanting to say trail craft, train craft or ra rail craft, and a little bit of trail craft because I'm mixing stuff up. Uh, immersive railroading. In the newest version, this is kind of obsolete because you can just make tra tracks. Jeez, I'm getting all mixed up. You can just make tracks cross each other like this and they'll work fine now. Um, oh, let's go ahead and keep that straight out there. But this is for if you have older things or if you specifically need a small crossing because if you shorten these both to three, it doesn't quite work. So rail crossing but uh, not 100% necessary as you can just have regular tracks cross. Next up is a slope and so a slope track 
rises one block over its length. And so you'll notice that it is now one block higher than when it started. And that's what a slope block, the slope track is, not too complicated. A turn, turn is where it starts getting complicated. It's a turn. Uh, and what's cool about the turn is you could decide how much it turns. So this is of course a 90 degree turn. And then you have a 65, 67.5 degree turn, which if you consider this a full turn, then a 65 and a half is a three quarters turn. So if I just go ahead and put that, you can see it doesn't quite complete. And then we go a half turn or 45 degrees. And then a quarter turn or 22 and a quarter or 22 and a half. Uh, you'll notice these all have the same curvature and that has to do with this number right here which I'll talk about in a moment. Then next up is a switch track. Now a switch track makes things really fun because you don't have to worry about just making a single loop. Uh, you can have branches. So a switch track is a straight and a turn built in one. Uh, and if you get yourself a redstone lever or just any sort of redstone signal then you can change how the track goes. Uh, and so when, you, when it does have a redstone signal, it will take the turn, and when it does not, it will go straight. Uh, and so as long as this sort of kind of gets the redstone signal, it'll be fine. Uh, I usually like to do this, just so that, you know, if a train kind of overhangs, it doesn't knock anything out. And so uh, just like a turn, you can set a switch track to be uh, less of an angle, so you can have some little boy like that, or another smaller boy just stuff like that um, and so yeah basically a turn and a track all rolled up into one uh, so the next is a turntable the turntable is a little complex it is probably the most complicated track uh, you'll notice they're all the red blocks but I've been creative so it'll break automatically um, there is a way to make life a little easier with that and I'll burn that bridge when I get there. So the turntable, one of the most common questions that's asked regarding tracks is how to use the custom curve, which I'll cover in a moment, and how to use the turntable. Turntable does not do anything with redstone. Uh, you get yourself a large wrench, which is indeed a very large wrench, and you just right click the turntable. And it turns the table. And then if you shift right click, then it goes the other way magnificent and so that's a turntable and you'll notice there's a lot of tracks and a lot of angles um, one thing that I did kind of forget to mention is all tracks can be angled so they don't just have to go straight they can go to quarter or a half or a three quarter just like the turns and so you'll notice that if I have say a turn that's a 45 degree angle then I can have a 45 degree straight come off of that like so they don't line up but there's ways to get around that and so that's what all these are for as you can see you can have all these fun little angles yeah that's quality and so yeah that's what a turntable does and then the best one is the custom curve so before I show you what a custom curve is I'm gonna un make you understand how appreciative I was when they added the custom curve, which was only recently. So let's say you're building a nice, cool railroad track, and say from spawn or something. And then over here, you got your base, and you're building your own cool railroad track. Oh, awesome. Oh, wait, hold up. They're not going to line up. And so in the old system, what you had to do is you had to get yourself a turn and sort of kind of angle it so that they're kind of sort of, sort of little kind of, kind of facing each other. Uh, oh, it needs to be a little shorter, so let's go ahead and go down to eight. Alright. Let's go ahead and get this down to eight here. I'll probably have to go up to nine. Do 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 and close enough. Pretty lined up. Alright, good to go. And so I have this ugly turn and they don't line up right. The train will still go over. If you have gaps like this, the train will still go over it just fine but it's kind of ugly but the custom curve was invented for a reason 
So the custom curve is a custom piece of track that requires the golden spike and also requires place blueprint to be turned on, which I'll go over in a moment. And what the heck, I'll go over it now. So, as I just showed you so far in this tutorial, you uh, look at where a track's going to go and you place it. And you look at where a track's going to go and you place it, which is all good and dandy. But if you're going to build a long track that kind of has to meander its way through something, so like let's say we have this village here, and we want to make the railroad track come in and kind of go, th yeah, well, let's make the track come in like this and then kind of go around and then turn out. So if we could easily just sort of come in like this, all right, so let's go ahead and get a turn and it's kind of hard to see where the turn is going to go. So let's go ahead and we'll make it a 45. And then we'll get another. Oh, well, now we, we placed all this track, but now we need a special one. Uh, uh, and so it's really frustrating because then you have to kind of come in through here like this and make it a different length. And just sort of mess with it and all that, which gets pretty sketchy pretty quick. But if you have place blueprint on, you'll get a nice little hologram, but then it will stay there. And this is especially useful when you're doing things like large turns. Um, because keep in mind, if you're in survival and there's a house in the way, well, you gotta bust down that house before it'll place. As you can see, there's all this red stuff. And so you need to break things before, so if they're in your way. But you can't tell what's in your way from all the way over here memorized and so that's why you have this blueprint so you can see where the track is going to go and then break everything that's in the way super handy and then once you're all clear alright ready to place this track you go over to where this spike is sticking out and that gives that shows you the sort of core block and then you shift and break the track and then it places and when it places that's when it'll take everything out of your inventory that it needs super useful when you're making tunnels or things like that where you have to dig and sort of excavate where you're going and so along that same vein you have to use that's how you have to use the track blueprint and so let's go back over here to our rails that are not quite lined up and it was a pain in the butt with all the turns well now it's easy peasy lemon squeezy with a custom curve so all we do is we right click you listen for that anvil noise perfect and then you come over to here and now when you right click the custom curve will automatically go wherever you want it even in crazy weird things like this um, so we just wanted to connect to this track look at that look at how beautiful that connects and then we just go over to here and we shift and break boom now we have that beautiful connection and it's also great for if you even if you just want to do a straight and you don't know how long you want it to be it's perfect and that brings us nice and smoothly into this number that you probably saw me messing around with this determines the length so if we just want 10 this track is 10 blocks long and then we can break it because it's all fine and dandy but if we do a turn well then that is the turning radius it's not the length of the track but now rather the radius of the turn and so you see this lines up right with there. So it's actually the radius minus one. Or minus one is the radius. So the radius of this turn is nine blocks, not ten, um, because it's the length and you have to subtract one to get into the middle of the rails and whatnot. And then you break it and boom, bam, boom. So, so if you want a wider turn, then you say bump this up to 150, and then you get a nice gradual turn there. Nice and easy turn perfect all right and then for so we saw the straight and then the crossing the crossing it's the same it's just a crossing it doesn't change with the length uh, the slope does and so the slope is probably one of the more one that's most affected by the length so as I mentioned the track goes up one block when it's on a slope and so if I make the slope length 20, well, it still goes up a block, but over 20. So you see it's half as steep. 
And this is great because trains don't climb hills all that well. So, if you have a longer track, gentler slope, you'll have more success with your trains. Turns, switch tracks are the same as turns. If you make it 150, you'll notice that the turn is just like a regular turn and is really long. And so yeah, switch track is the same as a track. It's the same as a turn. Uh, yeah. But you also notice this straight portion does not go 150 way away. It just goes until it's clear from this track. Excellent. Turntable determines the radius or the yeah the radius of the turntable. As you can see, this one was 10, and that's a 10 track right 10 length track right over there, and so it's 10 and 10. So if you have a 150 turntable, that's yeah that's lagging out of the game because of how big it is. So yeah, you're not gonna want a 150 uh, turntable. I'll go ahead and show you with a 20. And even a 20 is pretty excessive. I mean, look at that. That's pretty big. 150, that was 300 blocks. So yeah, my uh, computer is not having fun with that. And then custom curve is completely unaffected by track length because you can just custom define it to be whatever you want. You can make the track length 4 and you can make it 400. It doesn't matter. So that's the length. Probably way more long-winded than it had to be. But... Um, now you know everything there is to know about lengths. Next is the rail bed. Now the rail bed, you may have noticed on these tracks all over here, they don't have anything in between the ties. They're just kind of sitting on the ground. But these fancy tracks have gravel underneath them. And that is what the rail bed is. And so if you click rail bed, you see a beautiful selection of blocks. And all of these can be yours for only three easy payments of $19.99. And so if we go ahead and choose gravel, you can see that the model changes. And I'll go ahead and turn off blueprint. And we can see it's a nice gravel rail bed. This is really nice on the slopes because now you don't have a floating piece of track. It actually looks nice. And anything, and you'll notice that uh, I have, you'll, there's underneath cobblestone and it says minecraft colon cobblestone and then rail bed and cobblestone and so those of those two words on the bottom are the or dictionary name and if you add any block to the rail bed or dictionary it will be available as a rail bed to be used with immersive railroading now for most people that doesn't really matter but if you're familiar with craft tweaker or mind tweaker then that's how you can add your own custom rail beds so pretty useful for people who go above and beyond and make their own custom stuff. Um, but for you know people who don't really mess with mind tweaker and stuff, eh, it doesn't matter. Rail bed fill is something also completely different. You'll notice that I set the rail bed fill to cobblestone, but when I place a track, nothing happens. There's no cobblestone. Well, that is because it is not visible unless something kind of bad happens. So if I go over here, You'll notice there are all these holes. And if I just sort of have a track, it won't let me place over a hole, which makes it really frustrating if, say, I need to build a bridge. You can't place the track. So you'd have to build the bridge and then place your track. But if you set rail bed fill to something like cobblestone, well, it fills in underneath the rail. So you can see if I have a hole like this it'll automatically fill in and allow me to place the track super handy um, not so much if you use gravel because then the gravel falls and then you get an unstable track the track won't break instantly but it'll probably break upon some sort of chunk load or something like that uh, and remember how the rails and the treated planks left our inventory whenever we place the track automatically the same goes with the rail bed fill so if you're gonna use and rail beds so if you're gonna use nether rack rail beds you better have that in your inventory but it's again it's just the blocks and so if you're using cobblestone it'll automatically take cobblestone out of your inventory so that brings us into position 
And so the keen observer will have noticed that the track kind of locks to a, a full block. Well, if you set the position to pixels, then it will lock to the pixel. And you notice that it have more movement. And in fact, in some cases, the track gets to be four blocks wide. I don't know why this one over here is placed. It really should be this over here. But, you know, whatever. So, yeah, full pixel movement. And then if I set it to smooth, well, now that's just buttery. You can make it go anywhere. And this is good for... So I usually like to stick to pixel just because, you know, if it's smooth, this kind of goes into world loading times because it has to store it as a variable. And so when it's a pixel, the variable can be stored as a number of pixels, which is a 16th. But if it's smooth, then it has to store it as a float, which can have a lot more decimal points. But so if you, remember, if you recall, if I had it set to fixed, then we were stuck with a gap here. But if I set it to pixels, no more gap. And so that's really nice. Um, and a quick note on rail bed fill, you're going to want, or sorry, rail bed, you're going to want a rail bed when you do the uh, turntable because it just looks so much nicer than if you just have dirt. So a quick aside with that. Um, but yeah, now that it's pixels, I can line up the tracks much better, make it much more pretty. For that only a very small uh, notch and of course if I do it to smooth I can do it even better if I really focus look at that I hardly even tell um, but then you do have to keep in mind the whole mess of reconnecting it so that is that but you may have noticed that there's also locked versions and what the locked does is locks it from side to side so let's say you still want to have this nice freedom, but it goes a full block from side to side. So that's nice if you just want to line it up with a straightaway. And then the smooth lock does the same thing, but with smooth. I can smoothly move it back and forth, but I have to move it a full block side to side. Now this does completely go. This only the locked versions only apply if you're on a full. If you're going straight. Um, if you're on going at an angle, then it doesn't. It just kind of disintegrates and does the non-locked version. So that leads us to direction. Now the direction only applies to turns and switch tracks, but you'll notice that the direction depends on which way you're facing. But if you're going at a quarter or three-quarter angle, then it doesn't change. If you're at a 45, it's opposite of what you're facing which can be a little frustrating especially if you want to do a specific turn and so that's what the direction is. The direction will either lock it left so no matter what way you're facing it's always left or lock it right in which case it will always be facing right. So let's go ahead and get rid of this rail bed fill and all this stuff and go into gauge. Before I go into gauge um, just a reminder about bl placing the blueprint Placing a blueprint will bring you a hologram that shows you where the track is going to go. Makes it really easy to sort of line things up before you actually build your track. Because then you can just sort of go like this and boom, bam, boom. Awesome. This is exactly how I want my track. And then you see the little spike sticking out. And you shift and then break it. And that will bring up what you set up. This is perfect if you're you know doing a tunnel because if you have blocks here in the way like I showed you in the village you won't know if that's in your way if you have a really long piece of track so that allows you to break it up and then okay it's all clear and boom but if you do have a track say I have something like this but it is going through something and then I try to place it if you're in survival then it won't place so that's the useful thing about blueprints. And in a quick note about track length, the max length is a thousand or a kilometer, um, which is seems like a great idea. You know, I could build really long track really quickly, 
but not really because let's say you have let me try to get a kilometer of track so let's say you have a kilometer track here cool you built a kilometer track instantly that's really nice and all um, but one it kind of lags out as you just saw because it has to render this whole thing not not the most efficient and let's say you're mining alongside your track here to maybe run some wires or something and then you accidentally break your track well now you got a thousand blocks of track missing that you have to go and walk all the way to the end of to replace so I recommend this this is just a personal recommendation if you have straights don't make them longer than 20 you don't really get that much of a benefit out of placing big gigantic tracks other than speed and so I just suggest placing them in segments of 20 maybe 50 if it's like a really clear area that way if you're mining and then you break a track by accident you're only missing that one section rather than a gigantic area that maybe somebody already has a train on the only exception being slopes because you can't really get around that and if you want really nice gentle curves you can't get around making those really big other than maybe using uh, like a quarter curve and a quarter curve but that's just monotonous so just a personal recommendation before we get into gauges so in order to show you gauges I gotta have a train and so what better train than this fancy schmancy streetcar made by UNU made by yours truly um, so let's go ahead and jump into gauge so I'm gonna make this 50 and so standard gauge is standard uh, and you'll notice when you hover over a train it'll have a gauge right there at the bottom right below right above the uh, item ID or the item name and so that gauge tells you what it is designed to use and so you know this is designed to use Brunel um, this is designed to use narrow most of them are designed to use standard and to place them on the correct gauge um, they will appear and they're, then they're scaled properly and so I made this to be scaled properly to standard gauge and that's why it says standard on there and so if you make another gauge so let's go ahead and make a narrow gauge and then we get a narrow train right there well and now you can see that this is scaled appropriately and this is what the designer of this train had in mind they had in mind that it would be on a narrow gauge and so they scaled it appropriately and so if you're kind of flicking through here there's a lot of cool gauges so you have uh, standard which is standard and then narrow which is narrow uh, you have minecraft which is this well something doesn't like that uh, this is scaled to be a meter so minecraft scale track uh, and this is a cool one model which for some reason really lags out uh, so I'm going to kind of shorten it up a bit um, so there's model which is for model railroading which I think is pretty f neat and then there's Brunel which is like a freaking big boy this is this is big track and so if I go ahead and this this is meant to work with Brunel and so this is an old school train and so you can see it's scaled appropriately uses wider track and so all these trains are scaled appropriately except there's nothing for the model track but that doesn't mean that they have to be on the right gauge so if I take this awesome UNU streetcar and I put it on a narrow gauge it becomes a little tiny streetcar look at that that's adorable or likewise if I take this narrow gauge train which is the narrowest of what anything is designed for and I put it on a Brunel it just becomes this gigantic behemoth of a train um, and so the trains automatically scale to whatever track they're placed on uh, which is really cool for things like models but kind of problematic if you say I'll have to make this a little longer if you you know I guess if you really want like gigantic trains then it's not a problem um, but as you can see, this is kind of ridiculous. But hey, you know, to each their own. Um, I like the model, the model ones. I think I think they're freaking cool. Uh, so yeah, little little tiny model 
model trains. Um, and so yeah, that's kind of the end of the railroad section of immersive railroading. Alright, I would like to remind you all that I am a professional, um, but in my professionalness I did forget to mention grade crossings, this last checkbox. So what grade crossings do is you choose a rail bed and they provide a crossing. Now unfortunately they are angled so it won't work say if you wanted to make a streetcar system or something. Um, it, it probably still could work. Um, it just kind of looks kind of weird. Um, but you can, you can get something done. But what's really cool is you can use concrete and so you can, if you sort of design it carefully, then, oops, then you can make cool road patterns and actually make stripes. And then it's like this is a road crossing. And so that's what grade crossings are meant for. Um, they're kind of, I think they're pretty much aesthetic, although, you know, obviously you do stand on top of them, but I'm not sure if they provide anything other than aesthetic value. I don't think so. Um, cars can drive over railroad tracks just fine. Maybe not if it's like a Brunel, because, you know, it's a big boy. But, so grade crossings are great for grade crossings, railroad crossings, anything like that. Um, I hope you found this informative. Uh, if you do, go ahead and subscribe. I try to do a lot of tutorials. Sometimes I'm not the best, but I try. Um, and if you want to see part two, then you're going to want to keep in touch because, keep in touch, and then we're business partners, uh, you're going to want to subscribe if you want to see the next part in which I dive into the machines of immersive railroading. So thank you all for watching, and I'm not dead yet. Just an illusion.